an exploratory evaluation of a global health partnership, GHP pilot project to strengthen midwifery leadership in India. It's a project, uh, speaker Kate Stringer, to tell us about herself in the next slides. Thanks, Portia. Um, you can go to the next slide. As you said, this is uh, my research findings around a global health partnership that I participated in. Um, just a little bit about me. My name's Kate Stringer. I'm a consultant midwife in the UK. Um, and this is my dissertation findings that I um, particip participated in a global health uh, masters at City University in London which was um, really really great and gave us lots of opportunities to undertake um, global maternity work. I am currently funded by the NHR to look at developing um, midwifery research capability and capacity in my own organisation but across um, the region and in the UK and I run a number of um, research and global health partnerships um, the photo on the right is some work that I've done in India before um, in the place that this Global Health Partnership is based in. Um, uh, this is my family on the bottom left, so my husband and three children on holiday. And um, I always think of my career as a bit of a meandering river. So um, I like to follow different interests as I go along in my career um, and see what opportunities um, present as I go along. And I think um, up to date, that served me fairly well. Uh, next slide, please. So this is an evaluation of a global health partnership. So as a bit of background, um, my hospital in the UK partnered with a nursing and midwifery school in India, in Hyderabad. Um, there's a long history of global health partnerships um, across the world. They often match similar organisations or similar sectors together to look at health system strengthening or skill development or faculty development. But there isn't a lot of research on global health partnerships um, in midwifery, certainly not global health partnerships um, involved with Indian midwifery. The professional midwifery cadre of, in, in India is, is fairly new and developing and there hasn't been a lot of research um, focused on that group of midwives. Um, and equally this global health partnership that we undertook was going to predominantly um, take a hybrid virtual model and again there is some growing evidence around um, hybrid or virtual global health partnerships but not a huge amount because the landscape has changed a huge a huge um, amount since uh, the COVID and the need to work more virtually so I was really keen to um, undertake a, a health partnership with um, Indian midwives combining or partnering um, that system with the UK midwives to have a look at how we might be able to develop and expand uh, midwifery leadership both in the UK and in India and have a think about what elements of a global health partnership might be really really beneficial and how could we look at um, replicating that in other areas. Next slide please. So just a little bit about the context of maternity care in the UK. So sadly, um, maternal mortality rates and stillbirth rates have been rising in the last couple of years. There was a fairly consistent downward trend, um, but partly the rates um, have risen, probably associated with COVID, but actually there's growing poverty, um, health disparity, and increasing complexity in caseloads in the UK, which is equally having an effect on maternal mortality and stillbirth rates. Um, there's significant staffing challenges in the UK and need to um, rapidly expand student capacity to meet the growing needs. We've got a, um, an older workforce that many are retiring. And so how can we grow the workforce in a safe and sustainable way? And lots of lots of reports are sharing that midwives are suffering high levels of burnout, um, overwork and struggling to maintain um, joy within their work in the UK. 
And alongside that, there's been a high level of concern around some areas of midwifery practice um, or some particular trusts. But the themes from those reports are likely to exist in other organisations around um, safety and quality of care. Next slide, please. So the context in India is that they have one of the largest birth loads in the world. Um, they historically have had quite a high maternal mortality rate, but it varies dramatically across the country with much higher maternal mortality rates in the northern states compared to the southern states. But any impact on maternal mortality in India um, will have significant impact on the global maternal mortality rate. But the challenge in India is it's almost a huge continent in itself and their health needs vary dramatically from urban to rural settings and there's a, um, a great disparity in geographical locations. They've only recently introduced um, a cadre of professional midwives trained to ICN competencies. Historically, midwives in India were nurse midwives and didn't have a separate um, training component during their university years or often had very short midwifery placements that didn't meet the ICM competencies. But in 2019, the Indian government um, implemented a really historic piece of literature looking at expanding midwifery across India and have invested heavily into uh, developing the midwifery workforce, but it's still in its junior days. Next slide, please. So we partnered with the Nursing and Midwifery Training Institute in Hyderabad in India, and that partnership developed towards the end of 2022. Um, and the program took part in the latter part of 2022 and early 2023. This organization piloted the first batch of midwives in Telangana State, which undertook an 18 month midwifery program. And that went on in about 2017, 2018. And midwives have now been implemented across Telangana State um, in midwifery led care settings and obstetric care settings, but there's a really high volume of trainee midwives. Many of the midwives are quite junior in their own career, maybe being qualified one to two years since since the nurse midwifery training program and are now training up to 30 to 60 students perhaps with only one midwife so a real challenge around sort of maintaining clinical standards while also developing their own midwifery leadership and teaching capacity next slide please um, the trust in the UK that was part of this program is a district general hospital and um, has about 4,500 births with a high vacancy rate um, and a, a high migrant and asylum population. So very different contexts, very different clinical settings, um, but equally both settings had their own individual challenges. Next slide. So the Global Health Partnership. Um, was a six-month program. It was funded by FET, um, who didn't specify any um, evaluation, but this was something I wanted to, to undertake myself to make sure that the program was successful and, and how we might learn from this pilot project to maybe expand into other areas. It consisted of four UK midwives and 15 Indian midwives. There was initially more Indian midwives invited to participate, but not all could be released to be able to attend the program. It was really important to the partnership that um, it was co-produced and there was reciprocal learning for both groups. Really important that these types of partnerships don't um, continue on hierarchical lines and that both participants really have a shared sense of learning and development out of them. So at the start of the programme, both groups of midwives got together and discussed what might be beneficial for them. The programme then took place with weekly virtual sessions. Predominantly, it followed kind of a flipped classroom model. So resources were shared weekly. Both groups of midwives um, reviewed those references, articles, and then came together to discuss them on a weekly basis. Some of the content was um, uh, clinically based, so reviewing guidelines, updates, and then there was a lot around professional development, mentoring students, supporting a growth mindset methodology, um, and aspects of care such as that. 
the UK midwives then travelled to India and spent two weeks on site running leadership workshops and providing clinical support um, in placements. And we had an end of programme celebration where both groups of midwives shared some of the successes of their programme and some of the actions that they had taken um, since participating. Next slide, please. So the research aim was to explore Indian and UK midwives experiences of participating in a global health partnership. I wanted to look at how virtual mentorship might support international midwives and what would UK and Indian midwives get out of the experience. What were the benefits but also the challenges of participating in a global health partnership? What are the challenges to midwifery leadership and professional midwifery in India and what ongoing professional support and development might Indian midwives need? And what were the reciprocal benefits in terms of knowledge, leadership, capability and capacity for both groups of midwives participating in the project? Next slide. Ethical approval was sourced via the Indian Ethical Board in Hyderabad and also via City University. And the evaluation was qualitative interviews um, undertaken via online methods follow a month following the conclusion of the Global Health Partnership. Thematic analysis was used utilizing the Braun and Clark approach. And once I came up with an early um, thematic map, I met with some key stakeholders, participants in the research to test early ideas to improve participant validation. Next slide, please. It was really important to consider my own reflexivity and positionality. Um, I had worked in Hyderabad before as a senior midwife and I was also leading the project with the UK midwives and I am directly their line manager and this brought me insider and outsider status so um, I was able to run the project in India because I knew the team there and I knew the context and how it existed um, but also I was really conscious that previous kind of relationships wouldn't impact on the validity of the findings. I'm conscious of the colonial history of the UK across the globe and this can have significant historical impact in India. I'd been conscious of that before as a white Caucasian woman and I again wanted to make sure that the research finding and the midwives um, felt really able to share a true and honest reflection of the Global Health Partnership. It was also really important to me that we were focused on the impact of um, Indian midwives experience and knowledge generation. Historically, in, UK, in um, midwifery research, a lot of the midwifery research has been created by the global northern countries. And as midwifery develops across many of the global south countries, it's really important that the research is generated from these companies about how um, midwifery might be Im impacting midwives and also service users in those settings and I wanted to make sure that the program was reciprocal as I said before and so that both sets of midwives were gaining and developing from this program. Next slide please. So demographic data, in the end I interviewed 14 participants, um, both the mix of the Indian and the UK midwives they all had worked in the public sector, although some midwives in India were now working in the public and the private sector. They predominantly were all over the age of 30. The ex there was a range of experience. Some midwives had been practicing for quite a long time, but actually all of the midwives had only recently undertaken the 18 month ICM course, um, which lasted 18 years, the longest that they might have uh, finished completing that course was around two years. Many of the Indian midwives worked in very high birth load organizations, predominantly urban, with around seven to 10,000 births a year. Next slide, please. So the results. Um, I really enjoyed the thematic analysis um, and the main themes exploring Indian and UK midwives' experiences were developing as a leader, the value of peer support, what challenges they faced as part of the partnership, but also the wider context that they were working in, and also the shared value of the future together as a group of midwives. And within each of those 
four main themes. There was a number of sub-themes, sub which I'm going to go through during the next few slides. Next slide, please. So developing a leader was one of the most prominent themes throughout the research. Midwives really shared that they found teaching as a driver for quality um, in their own organisations, both publicly and professionally. All of the midwives had either an overt um, role in teaching, so either they were qualified as midwifery educators or they acknowledged their wider impact of teaching across the multi-professional groups, students or women and birthing people during their role. But they hadn't previously recognised that and they felt that what they got through the course was a higher sense of understanding about the role of teaching and how they could impact the quality of practice during their teaching methods. They all demonstrated um, additional skills and qualities in emotional intelligence and critical thinking. While they didn't name it as emotional intelligence, they all discussed how they had been able to enhance reflection and self-awareness and tackle problems in clinical practice in a, in a new or an alternative way. They had found that the program had enhanced their self-awareness and enabled them to gain insight into their impact in their role and how that might be affecting some of their multi-professional relationships. You can see from the quote in the corner, that's fine, carry on, Ali, don't worry. Um, many, carry on, that's okay, Portia, carry on. Um, all of the midwives participating shared an enhanced sense of confidence. Um, I'm just going to let you read these two quotes here. The quote from the UK midwife on the bottom really shows that the the challenge of participating in a global health partnership really boosted her self-confidence and belief and enabled her to feel that actually she could probably do a, mo a lot more than she already thought that she was capable of. And that she was able to bring that back into UK practice and apply that in ways that she hadn't done previously. Next slide, please. Many, many of the midwives talked about the value of peer support, using the words like a network, particularly the Indian midwives who were often working in public institutions with really high volumes of birth, very hierarchical and challenging environments, often trying to mentor and um, teach 30, 40 students um, single-handedly. They felt very early in their professional careers and valued the safe space that the Global Health Partnership offered them. They felt a sense of relief that they were able to share some of their challenges and the strength in peer support that they had got from their colleagues and the UK colleagues in other organisations. The UK midwives and the Indian midwives reflected on global midwifery. They shared a sense of purpose and that many, although their contexts were different, the sense of women's consent, autonomy, advocacy um, aligned wherever you were working in the world. And that brought them together through a sense of um, compassion and, and peer support. And they demonstrated reciprocity in many, many different circumstances. And I've got some quotes on the next slide. Again, the UK midwives had um, witnessed a different sense of midwifery, although, like I said, many, many alignments, and they'd felt inspired and impassioned by what they'd seen in India. They came back to the UK and it felt like they had filled their cup and they were able to advocate and champion women's rights within the UK setting in a way that they hadn't been able to do before. 
Next slide, please. There were undoubtedly some challenges around participating in the Global Health Partnership, but also the midwives shared challenges in clinical practice and working with multi-professional teams. Many of the Indian midwives who were newer in their careers and working in, in high volume public institutions shared some of the professional challenges around a lack of um, understanding and respect for their role and some of the um, respectful maternity care concerns that they had within their setting. However, some of the Indian midwives that had been working longer in more established institutions were able to share that when trust had been developed within multi-professional teams, then often those relationships had enhanced um, and they were more able to deliver the role that they felt that they should be doing. Some midwives felt that the practicalities of the global, global Health Partnership was challenging. The Indian midwives shared that they really enjoyed the clinical site visit and the um, role modeling and mentorship when we were in India supporting the team. But the UK midwives felt that the virtual format had worked well in helping them get to know the team and co-produce the resources so that when they arrived in India, they felt they had a better understanding of the context and challenges. Next slide, please. The midwives all shared a sense of profound hope and purpose following participating in the Global Health Partnership. UK midwife one shared that it, it meant that she couldn't just sit in the background anymore. She wanted to step forward and she felt fired up. She wanted to make changes to the UK practice in terms of... Um, sort of prioritizing the human rights of women and childbirth, thinking about health inequalities in our own practice and in our own trust. Another UK midwife said that I felt like it was not only the leadership being transferred to them, but also to us. Being compassionate, having difficult conversations, I feel like I have the strength to do it now. Both groups of midwives regularly shared that experience that they had gained strength through the project together once they understood each other's challenges. The next slide, please. So what does the research tell us amongst the wider literature? So undoubtedly, there is an intersectional feminist approach to this. Um, all of the people participating in the research were women and identified as women and worked in women-led work. And this undoubtedly has an impact on the context and setting and value of our work as midwives. The program elicited a sense of compassionate leadership amongst all of the midwives that participated. They shared enhanced emotional intelligence, critical thinking, reflection and self-awareness. And these are key leadership attributes that are often quite difficult to articulate, measure or capture within curriculum or development programs. In many, many curriculums globally, there is talk of midwifery leadership and how to develop to become a change maker or a, um, a future midwifery leader, but it's often difficult to find time to deliver that within very pressured curriculums that often focus on clinical sk skill acquisition. The midwives shared a sense of communities of practice. Communities of practice have been around for some time, but they weren't really existing within the Indian midwifery sector. And this could be an area to consider as midwifery is rolled out in other countries and other states. How can we build in early groups of communities of practice to help strengthen midwives peer support, knowledge, capacity and reflection? The UK midwives felt an inspired sense of advocacy. They'd been able to um, explore different challenges with Indian midwives in very difficult circumstances in, in India. And they felt very committed to the role of the midwife working with women and working in partnership. And midwives sharing their different challenges and approaches to this had inspired both groups of midwives to move forward in their desire to continually promote advocacy and human rights in their work. 
And the project wanted to look at what is the continued professional development needs of midwives, particularly in India, where there doesn't currently exist a program of continual professional development. What experiences might midwives really value that will help them continue to develop their roles as midwives in India to enable them to meet the challenging context and the rollout of the profession across their country. Next slide, please. So there was definitely insight into the continued professional development that Indian midwives value. What they told us they wanted was opportunities for leadership development, self-reflection, coaching and peer support. They felt that they were developing clinical skill acquisition within their settings and that had been delivered to them by their curriculum. But what they now needed was quality improvement methodology, reflection, um, ways of developing their resilience and strength so that they were able to continue to be committed to the midwifery philosophy of care. Previous reports on global health partnerships discussed the challenges of different contexts assimilating into lower middle income countries quite rapidly. But fortunately, I already had an experience um, and a relationship with the Indian context. And therefore, I think that that probably helped the UK midwives be able to um, contextualize the environment there quite quickly because I had um, spent a lot of time exploring with them what the challenges were and, and what to expect when they arrived into the country. Undoubtedly, the limitation that is just a small exploratory project. However, um, there is likely to be relevance in other settings in India, but also in other early um, midwifery career settings across the globe. Predominantly, the midwives were working in urban settings, in high volume birth environments, and it would be interesting to explore um, whether midwives working in rural settings, both in the UK and in India, would have similar findings. And another reflection was that actually we were working with communities of practice and a global health partnership just focused on midwives. However, what the Indian midwives told us was some of the challenges working with the multi-professional team. So it could be worth exploring a global health partnership in the future that included other professionals to help strengthen teamwork across the different professions as the cadre is um, expanded in India. Next slide, please. So implications for the future, all of the midwives participating demonstrated enhanced compassionate leadership skills. And this is vital for developing and maintaining the profession globally, but often areas of practice that are overlooked or difficult to make space for that professional development. There was a profound impact on the UK midwives. They felt inspired, impassioned, and a real sense of joy and worth in their roles. These were all aspects that had been missing previously in their role, and they came back to their UK practice having felt inspired and, and really wanted to move forward in their roles and looking at future leadership and development opportunities within the UK. This may have impact on recruitment and retention in UK practice. Um, there is a, a staffing crisis here in the UK at the moment and small projects that we are able to offer midwives that might expand their knowledge and experience while also bringing, their, bringing them professional pride and joy should be something that we can consider. This was a very cost effective um, module, very, very low cost for a six month project that has such an impact on so many midwives. I've touched on it already, but it's really worth considering how we might be able to explore multi-professional global health partnerships to help strengthen teamwork and explore different people's roles and responsibilities that are working with in maternity care across the globe. And it's really important that we don't overlook continual professional development. Um, we, there is some systems ongoing in the UK, but sometimes this hasn't existed in other places across the globe. And make sure when we're looking at continual professional development, we really explore what midwives want and need to help them develop in their careers. Next slide. 
So that's the main content over. Thank you to all of the midwives that have participated in the program. Um, without you, I wouldn't have been able to undertake this research. There's many, many other people that um, have helped me on this research journey. And I'm really grateful to all of you. Grateful to my own trust for um, enabling me to undertake this project and to FET for the funding that enabled this project to be undertaken. Next slide. Thank you.